Hello students, welcome to this session. Today I am going to present you regarding the topic of dural folds. So dural folds as the name itself indicates, it's the folds of the dura matter. So dura matter is the outermost covering of the brain. Even the outermost covering of spinal cord is also dura matter, but there it is not thrown into folds. It is only the dura matter of cranial cavity that is thrown into folds. So to tell, uh, before going on to the topic of dural folds, just to recollect about the meninges. The outermost layer is the dura matter, the middle is arachnoid matter and the innermost is the pia matter. Okay. So, regarding the dura matter, to tell about the dural folds, so see the differences between cranial and spinal dura matter as I have told, only in the cranial dura matter you will be seeing two layers, that is outer endosteal layer and the inner meningeal layer. So that inner meningeal layer is thrown into folds and in between these folds you will find the venous sinuses, they are called as dural venous sinuses, whereas in case of spinal dura matter there is only meningeal layer and there is no dural folds and dural venous sinuses. That is the main difference between cranial and spinal dura matter and one more difference is the space that is present outside the dura matter, that is epidural space is not present in cranial dura matter, it is only present in spinal dura matter where it contains some semi-liquid fat, loose areolar tissue and internal vertebral venous plexus. So just to show here the layers, the cranium, so you can see here the dura matter is splitting into two, that is endosteal and meningeal layer. So that meningeal layer is thrown into a fold that is uh, between the two halves of the cerebral hemispheres and in between that space you are finding the dural venous sinuses. So these are the four dural folds, fox cerebri, fox cerebelli, tentorium cerebelli and diaphragm cellae. So before moving on to these four folds, so I'll be giving a rough outline that about the bony features of the skull because you see the major attachments of this dural folds to that bony features. So this slide is just to show what is the function of these dural folds. It minimizes the rotatory displacements of the brain for partitions of the brain, for protection and also the space for dural venous sinuses. So here this is to tell about the bony features that is interior of the skull where you are seeing the anterior cranial fossa which is in blue, middle cranial fossa the most of it is formed by the body of I mean the sphenoid bone with its body lesser wing and greater wing of the sphenoid bone and this is the petrous part of the temporal bone which is forming a limit between middle cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa. So this is the posterior cranial fossa formed mainly by the occipital bone. Okay. So particularly I have taken here sphenoid bone. This is the bony feature of like sphenoid bone with the body of the sphenoid bone at the center and you see the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone and this is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. In the greater wing of the sphenoid bone you find the major foramens there, foramen oval, foramen spinosum, foramen rotundum etc. And you can see here lesser wing of the sphenoid bone will extend medially into a process that is anterior clinoid process. Remember that because you have the attachment of dural fold here to this anterior clinoid process. Okay. Then coming to the center that is body of the sphenoid bone. So there you have two elevations like that, that is tuberculum cellae in front, dorsum cellae behind. The extension from dorsum cellae is called as posterior clinoid process and in between these tuberculum and dorsum cellae you have a fossa that is called as hypophyseal fossa or pituitary fossa for the lodging of pituitary gland. Coming to the first dural fold that is fox cerebri. So it is a large sickle shaped fold of dura matter. When I tell sickle shape, the term fox refers to that sickle shaped itself. So a large sickle shaped fold of dura matter that is seen in between the two cerebral hemispheres across the median longitudinal fissure is called as fox cerebri. So its anterior attachment is narrow and it is attached to crista galli, the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. So this projection what you are seeing here is the crista galli on the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone and after that it is having an attached border, attached margin which is attached all the way to the superior sagittal sulcus. So you can see in the next picture here. So this one after the frontal crest is the superior sagittal sulcus. So here is the attached margin of the fox cerebri attached and then as it comes posteriorly it is blending with another dural fold that is tentorium cerebelli to the superior surface of tentorium cerebelli. So see here, 
the anterior attachment of fox cerebri and after that it is passing back and merging with another dural fold that is tentorium cerebelli. And the venous sinuses that are related to this dural folds are superior sagittal sinus, you can see there, inferior sagittal sinus are the free margins of the dural folds and straight sinus which is at the junction between the mergings of the posterior aspect of fox cerebri with the tentorium cerebelli. So you can see the cut portions of fox cerebri which is merging with the tentorium cerebelli here. Separately showing the sinuses related, it is superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus and the straight sinus. This is how the anterior attachment to the crista galli is removed and it is reflected from the median longitudinal fissure and shown. So this is the fox cerebri. Coming to the next dural fold that is tentorium cerebelli. Tentorium, so it is forming a tent of the posterior cranial fossa and it is for what? It is for cerebellum. So over the cerebellar hemispheres you will see this dural fold that is tentorium cerebelli. So you can see here the tentorium cerebelli how it is spreading off even here. So attachments of the tentorium cerebelli. So posterior attachment, the attached borders of the tentorium cerebelli are attached to the transverse sulcus. Now this is the transverse sulcus and after that to the petrous part of the temporal bone. Hope you remember the bony attachment what I told. So superior border of the petrous part of the temporal bone, the attached part and then to the posterior clinoid process which is an extension from dorsum cellae. So that is posterior clinoid process. So this is all the attached margin of the tentorium cerebelli and the free margin of the tentorium cerebelli is in a form of u-shaped notch you're seeing there u-shaped notch and that is going and attaching to the anterior clinoid process it's going and attaching to the anterior clinoid process and in between this tentorial notch you'll have the midbrain the circle of villus formation and all that and related to the sinuses for the dural folds this is tentorium cerebelli and like you can see the transverse sinus lodging in the transverse sulcus then superior petrosal sinus and also straight sinus these are all the sinuses related to tentorium cerebelli so here you can also see the fox with the sinuses related and you can also see the transverse sinus leading to sigmoid sinus straight sinus coming to the next dural fold that is fox cerebelli fox again so it is a small sickle shaped fold of dura mater which has a base above which is attached to the inferior aspect of the tentorium cerebelli and apex is directed downwards which will blend with the posterior margins of foramen magnum so base above apex below and it has got an attached margin that fox cerebelli so that attached margin is attached to internal occipital crest extending from internal occipital protuberance to the foramen magnum you will have that internal occipital crest there's a paper model to show fox cerebri tentorium cerebelli and this one is a small sickle shaped fold going to the lips of foramen magnum so that is fox cerebelli the last dural fold that is diaphragma cellae so hope you remember the cella tertica like a Turkish saddle it resembles so that cella tertica and tuberculum cellae dorsum cellae is the attachment of a small circular fold of dura mater that's called as diaphragma cellae at the center of the diaphragma cellae there is an aperture that is formed where the infundibulum or stalk of the pituitary gland emerges out so in this picture you can see it's actually the attachment of diaphragma cellae here the circular fold of dura mater where you can see tuberculum cellae anteriorly it's attached and dorsum cellae posteriorly it is attached the venous sinuses related to diaphragma cellae is anterior intercavernous sinus posterior intercavernous sinus which is draining to the paired sinus which is present laterally on the body of the sphenoid bone that is cavernous sinus i repeat again anterior intercavernous sinus posterior intercavernous sinus draining to cavernous sinus present laterally of the body of the sphenoid bone this is just to show the sinuses, superior sagittal, inferior sagittal, stray sinus, transverse sinus leading to sigmoid sinus and the venous sinus that is related to fox cerebelli is occipital sinus. That's the dural fold partition between the two cerebral hemispheres, how the partition is seen there. That's the fox cerebri, 
inferior sagittal sinus, straight sinus, tentorium cerebelli, tentorial notch, the free margin of tentorium cerebelli, and this is diaphragma cilae, the great cerebral vein. That's our museum specimen to show just the removal of brain, and you can see the fox cerebri, tentorium cerebelli, fox cerebelli. The intact dural folds, and this is from the superior view. You are able to see clearly the tentorium cerebelli with the tentorial notch, portions of the brain stem, circle of villus, and transverse sinus, superior petrosal sinus. Thank you.